the motion for closed session. Good morning. I would like to call this special meeting of May 29th, 2020 to order. Do I have a motion that we we go into a special meeting? I'm so moved. Second. Okay, we are now in um, in session for a um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, we are now in session. We have the motion to amend the agenda for client attorney communication for contract for Neil Whitford. He's an attorney at law uh, for Carteret County, and he will be representing us at the upcoming hearing, and we need to make a motion to agenda amend the agenda do i have a motion you have a motion that we amend the agenda do i have a second second okay any discussion yeah i'd like to uh understand um more about why we need an additional attorney um as we have uh already Thurnton and smith it is i believe Smith. okay yes ma'am and so they've been dealing with this process and several uh, attorneys, at least I thought, but we had one general practitioner attorney we referred to who was our normal uh, liaison and his name's also Neil, or I forgot his last name. Randy. Neil Randy, yes ma'am. And then I thought we had uh, people within his firm, for example, dealing one dealing with the uh, uh, new potential school site and um, I was under the impression we had someone based on Neil's comments that was already dealing with the hearing and some of the other uh, communications that we've talked. Right. And so I'm questioning why we need an outside uh, attorney group. Right. Yes, I, like I, think, I think I can answer that question and Mark, if you want to chime in. Sure. Uh, the, reason, the reason we need uh, attorneys, separate attorneys, is we have three people that are involved yeah, in this hearing. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but it does show that it's not muted, correct? Yes. Yeah, it's not it's muted. Right. Sorry, it's yeah. not coming through. Okay. All right. Um, we have three attorneys because the Board of Education needs an, needs an attorney for the hearing next Friday. Our superintendent, Mark Stefanik, needs representation. So he has the attorney with the same law firm, Darrington and Smith out of Raleigh, and they feel that there would be a conflict of interest for us to have an attorney that is associated with that firm. And then um, we have Dr. Matney, and he has seeked his own legal counsel. So that's the reason we have to have someone that is solely looking out for our best interest. Uh, I, I guess, ma'am, I just have a, 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 a issue with, it started off, it was the board's attorney, and we've had other discussions at times and I've raised some questions with other instances and they always said that they could represent the board interest above the superintendent's interest. So I'm not clear as to why. Now, our firm is, is, is solely representing the superintendent and somehow now we got to go get another firm to represent the school system. I find that to be troubling. I find that to be um, at best. I just have a question as to why um, our superintendent didn't have an attorney before now. He did. Well, I did. Well, they, yeah. the same firm. Yeah, yeah yes. What, All what, along. Yes. What happens is when when the when the school district is operating, <clears throat> the the administration, i.e., superintendent and the school board, are seen as one team. Right. Uh, and and we operate uh, using the same. Um, the same attorney firm, uh, and so we're operating on the, for the good of the district. And so there's one attorney that represents all two of us or all six of us, however you want to look at it. Um, and but when you sit as a hearing board, so not as a board of education, when you're having a hearing, right. you're sitting as a, a type of a judicial um, board. Then at that point, if the superintendent is one of the presenting parties. To the the judicial board, that's when the the attorney piece has to be separated. Uh, I, I understand so, that, but we've known about this hearing for a month or more. 
So I'm, I'm wondering why you didn't have an attorney for it before now. Well, we have. We have that, that's, that's what uh, Darrington Smith is saying. That oh, you because, were going to have somebody from their firm. Right. We have somebody from their firm that has been working initially with so HR. Okay. And then when I got the HR report, then because there was an attorney that had background information about the HR process, that attorney then was uh, was handed over to the superintendent for our presentation to the board. He had that much background information. The board's general attorney has not been privy to this general information about the investigation. Uh, and so at this time, the last time he had a hearing, the Therrington Smith attorney stayed with the board. Yeah. And then I was asked if I wanted to get a separate attorney for, for our piece. That one seemed to be uh, not at the scope of this one. And so I thought that I could go into that hearing without representation. Uh, and so in this particular case, to answer Mr. Craddock, if Farrington and Smith, I mean, if it's the board's wishes that Farrington and Smith stay representing the board, that that would be fine. And then um, HR and the superintendent, we would have to go out and get a, a different attorney. So then we might go into contract with like Mr. Whitford, uh, you know, at the attorney's firm. But they thought in this case, since the attorney at Farrington and Smith has been involved with the investigative process, making sure that all legal pieces of that process were covered, that he's had more months involved in this process than other attorneys at Barrington and Smith. So they thought for operational type of uh, guidance that um, a substitute attorney could give that uh, guidance to the board. I just wonder if, you know, given the scope of this one, if we as the board should have the attorney that is most familiar and let our superintendent have the new attorney. I mean, I, I don't know. What what should we have? The problem I got is is that I've raised a couple times that under other conversations that we might likely have unrelated to this instance situations where we have potential conflict of interest, much like what he just described, but it never seemed to be a concern before and I find it problematic that we um aren't consistent and I, I really find that problematic I also find it uh problematic that we got the hearing schedule for next Friday and now we're gonna worry about getting our council together I, I you know, how can we, because I was told before that Therrington and Smith was the board's attorney, and we were discussing things at different times that I felt like could be a potential for a conflict of interest, meaning I described. One example, if the board is represented by the attorney and the superintendent is represented by the same attorney, I raised the question as if it was a married couple and they had the same attorney. Then I used the example as if they were getting a divorce. Would either party be able to use that attorney represent them going forward because the attorney had represented both parties? Then I also use the example dual agent in a real estate closing. And then you have a problem and one seller and a buyer are, are now litigating. That attorney can't represent either party. And we got the same thing going on here now, and, and, I, and I feel like I've raised some of these concerns in the past. Nobody heeded the warning. Here we are, we're seven days out from a case that has been worked on for many, many months, and somehow now the school system is gonna re-up with a new legal team. Am I about yes. to say anything? Yes, please. Um, this, this is the outlook that, um, it has always been brought to my attention, especially being a principal in the school system also. Um, Barrington and Smith is all of our attorneys, and I've been working with Barrington and Smith since the end of February, beginning of March area with um, one of their lawyers right now. When we get to the hearing portion, you should not have talked to anybody that were interviewed or talking to the person that we that had the issue because of the fact when it goes to hearing 
you should not have any background information. The lawyer that you choose is not going to say, they're going to tell you what, what the, um, the situation is, you're going to talk to them. You're not going to get any evidence at that time with your lawyer. During the hearing is when we, we both sides have parties that are going to come in. You have an open mind during that period, hearing period. You're going to hear both sides at that time. And that's what you're going to um, talk about and come to a consensus with. You're not going to be given any free information on anything that's collected at this time. The hearing is we go in unbiased, you as a board member is unbiased, sitting without talking to anybody, hopefully, concerning the case, and you get an open, um, a real open look at what both sides, we, all, we both bring in um, um, individuals to talk about what has been taking place. I don't know if that clarifies anything. And I can appreciate that. that. I really can. Mm -hmm. uh, the timing. And their lack of communication and the short distance between the hearing that's a problem the fact that we've had other hearings which yes that lawyer was involved with some of the discussions leading up and we did something different that's a problem the fact that i've raised that we might have a conflict of interest much like this in the past and was given bad legal advice in my opinion by third tenor smith once again that's a problem. I, I'm just uh, curious why Neil didn't recommend to us sooner. But you know, if we've got to have a different attorney, then we got to have a different attorney. Well, uh, as, as, I, as, I, as I said, as I said, as I said, somebody has to. Um, somebody has to have a different attorney. And but so the thing is that the attorney that is dealing with that, I can see why Neil doesn't want to do that yes. because. He knows them personally. They work in the same office. So, but I can say why he did tell us this. And I can appreciate I'm that. But when we were talking about other things with Neil, a very sensitive matter, he didn't mind uh, stepping aside then. He certainly did. Okay. Because we've had some discussions that involved the board and the superintendent with that very person that doesn't want to handle this issue now. And I broached that about conflict of interest i've tread down those paths numerous times you can't have it both ways yeah, but he's not well, representing i understand that. but he said at that time i said to him how if we had a difference between the board and the superintendent could you represent us or him and he said i'm the board's attorney i can represent you exactly and that's yeah. what i said 90 i would say 95 times out of 100 the school district and the, and the superintendent are operating as as one if there becomes a, an issue uh, between a superintendent and the board, the attorney immediately goes to the board and the superintendent is on his or her own. Uh, and that's that's the way that process works. They don't that's represent the, yes, sir. That's the way I was told it was working. Yeah. That's not the way it appeared. But, uh, okay. So we got, we got, we got that's, seven that's days notice. Just, we just, we just, got that's seven that's days that. notice to get a new attorney from the school district. Anybody find that a little bit uh, timing of uh, a uh, problem? Yeah, but he's not. But what I'm going well, back. He's to supposed to be impartial and it, unbiased. Uh, yes, he's so it's, agree, so it's like a mediator. Be before he's just going to tell us yeah. what kind of questions the we legal, can ask. He's okay. a piece of the process. Yeah, yeah, he's not an he attorney. He sets up the framework for the hearing. That, that would be explain, representing someone in a divorce case and, and being privy to all this information prior to the hearing. He is going to be. Totally unbiased. Totally unbiased. Well, why are we going to go into closed session and talk with them if he's going to be unbiased? What do we got to talk about other than give him a contract? We have, we he's going to talk person. about what next Friday looks like. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. And so, and so whether or not the board is in a position where um, they're going to ask questions of each side or whether they're going to allow, uh, well, and one thing that's on here, there's a policy that has to be uh, revised because in the current hearing policy, it says each side only gets 15, 15 minutes, minutes to present. Uh, we didn't hear to that the last time we had a hearing. We went way past that. Mm, no, yeah. we, no, we not on not my part. I, I was on a timer last okay. time. And the question and answer may have gone past exactly. that, but my presentation, but the presentation was 15 minutes. Presentation yes, are, okay, right. I could be the same correct. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so that, you're and, probably clear on that. And so that's the, the thing that the board would then consider um, 
they thought that uh, you know because of uh, uh, information that's been collected and or information that would like to be shared that each side might appreciate more than 15 minutes yeah, to uh, uh, present information yeah when i spoke with him yesterday i said what kind of time do you think we need and he said probably at least 90 minutes per side to to present, I know that's a long time for you to have to present, but he said, and you don't have to take that 90 minutes. Thank you. you. Have to do <laughs> 90 minutes. So can we speak that's like a master's thesis. Uh, that's a can we speak minutes. with the other attorney that of the opposition of the complaint that's filed against? Did we, did we speak with them to see if they want the rules changed the week out? I haven't. Did, did anybody speak with, with, with the person? It is the uh, if we get if we, if we, we are allowed, we are, allowed are we changing the rules? Not only are we changing council, but are we getting ready to change the rules. Well, if we can, if y'all want to keep it 15 minutes, we can certainly do that. But I want to, hear I, I, I don't mind like changing it if both parties in agreement. Yeah. Well, that's what he's gonna, yeah. he's and gonna I can give the answer. I, can, yeah, I don't know if he's talked to um, he the other attorney, has. but the two attorneys, um, on, on both sides of, uh, of this right. hearing. Have been in communication yes. with each other, you know, uh, and I, so they probably talked about. Hey, we're we don't have the right to talk to, to the other attorney. Ask our attorney and and I that. think that we should stick with whatever attorney has been in touch with this person who's making the appeal. They've been in touch with that attorney. They've talked. I know you've told us that they're talking. They're working. Right. I think we should stick with that attorney, whoever that may be. Well, I think he needs permission from us if we want to represent him. That's the first thing. We have to we have to hire him. We have but, to yeah, but she's saying she wants us to keep him. Because they've been yes, talking. Oh, you're talking about Neil Rainey and Neil with Whitford. The other attorney, Neil Neil Rainey has spoken with Neil Whitford because Neil Whitford is not in Raleigh. He's Carteret County. He specializes in hearings. So he's trying to do the right thing and step him back instead of having a conflict of interest within the same firm. So he has spoken with him and he's in agreement with representing us. But did you and say that the two attorneys have been talking, we may not even have an appeal? No, no we're, we're going to have a, no, we're having an appeal. But, a, but I'm talking a week or two. Oh, ago. sure. They've yeah. been talking. Yes. So whatever. But not, which, but not this man. No, no I know no. that. But I think we should stay with whoever's been talking with the person who filed the appeal, his attorney, uh -huh. and our attorney have talked. And it's I not Neil it, Ramey. It's yeah, Colin it's Shive. And I don't, I don't that know I'm because with. he's been working with oh, him at HR. Yeah, it's not Neil I don't Ramey. Think, I'm not sure he's allowed to represent the board because he has all the investigative information. I mean, he would be so biased. He, would, he yes. would be unbiased in this situation. Excuse me, but who is it that spoke with the uh, attorney? Of the complaint, who is it that Colin? Colin. I mean, about the time change. Colin, uh, the, the the attorney that has been working with HR and the superintendent, he has been in contact with the um, uh, the, the, the the appellant's uh, uh, attorney. So what you're saying is, this other attorney, not uh, Neil, that we normally speak with Neil Rainey, right? But Colin. Right. The one that's call, call on the the HR special 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 special. Special. Yeah, call okay. HR has been in communication board. with the person found with, the, the, with, with the person that requested the hearing. Yes. Correct. Yes. And then is that person Colin and the person that filed an appeals attorney talked about the change in this policy twenty five hundred. That's what I'm going to check when you're talking to Mr. Whitford. Because when you talk to Mr. Whitford, I don't believe I can be in here because that's about your process of the hearing and not my part. And so while you're doing that, I can check with Colin and verify whether they've talked about it. I think they have because they <laughs> talked about when the hearing was going to be scheduled, and we're not what the hearing was going to look like, but I'll verify. Yes, ma'am. Right, it's I, in the I, open I meeting. I I'll talk about when, all kinds of um, people. And, and can I say one thing? I think. Um, Sometimes the, the misinterpretation comes when when we first start an investigation and it's at the very beginning stages. Um, there's sometimes we need lawyer assistance, but there's sometimes we do not. Yeah. 
This brought us to lawyer assistance. And they normally, throughout my entire career, and I've been here 34 years, um, I have never gone to an appeal, never. And um, it's, it's I in doubt before it's gone to an appeal. This is my first appeal I have ever been in. So that's why we have the lawyer trouble right now because it's gone to the appeal measure. Yeah. Normally, what usually, happens. what usually happens, the superintendent would, if it's a disciplinary thing that has to be taken care of, it's taken care of. Or in this case, the superintendent recommends something that needs to be done, whether it's um, a, a suspension or a, um, a, a, a non-renewal or a termination. Non-renewal and termination are two different things. Too. Yes, ma'am. And I think, Bill, you understand, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm talking the common, I, I might be talking too common English here, but I don't know if, because you were a superintendent. Any, 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 time, any time any employee gets any type of action uh, based on an investigation, the, the, the bottom of the letter says you have X number of days to appeal this to the Board of Education. That, that is a right of an employee. Uh, and so, uh, again, that's why I said about 95% of the time, it never gets to, uh, it gets to the board level with an appeal. Well, it sounds like 100% of the time, because she said she's been here for 34 years and she's never experienced anybody taking it. So that means the normal process, whatever it is that gets recommended, whether the person really agrees with it in her heart or not, they just succumb to whatever that is. That's my opinion. I, I just oh, they I, accept it. Yeah, yeah they yeah. succumb. Yeah. You know, it is a big appeal. And I we have had this attorney since I've been on the board. And um I feel comfortable with it. I, I'm a little concerned about hiring an attorney to represent us as a board in something of this magnitude, and it has to be of great magnitude if it's the first one Anne's had in 34 years. I don't know if I want to switch a week before you, but I don't want to delay. I, let's move on with this. If it's the board's pleasure, if you want to, you know, go into, uh, you know, closed session to talk with Mr. Whitford and ask him yeah, these questions or share these concerns and say, should, should you really be representing us or you know, should we stick with our regular attorney? You can have that conversation openly with him and say, you know, and you can make a determination of whether his meter, uh, you know, uh, and we the then? Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. You have to talk to him before. And, You're and okay actually, to be actually, this motion is just to amend the agenda. Now, this motion. We are not on G. G is when we approve the contract. We are on a motion to amend the agenda. Correct. Yeah. And add, uh, okay. no, so okay. I think we can add that. Okay, yes, ma'am. Talk to him and make a decision when you get well, the you, I think it's already set. Already it's already set. Okay. Okay. So for discussion. discussion. Yeah. No, and so then I agree with our superintendent that we go into closed session and we talk with him. And at that point, we decide whatever. Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the discussion. We have a first and we have a second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And now the motion. I'll make closed. a motion. We're going to close session. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? We're now in closed session. We're going to get the cut Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what you can do is just turn off the laptop and then I'll, I'll make sure that they get the. They get the